can start. Misconceptions and fears of nuclear power. Nuclear power is likely to face a decline in advanced economies, as the International Energy Agency, an international organization that reports on energy sources, predicts that nuclear energy's capacity around the globe will be cut down by two-thirds in 2040. This is a major problem, as nuclear energy consists of 10% of the globe's energy capacity and is the second largest source of low-carbon technology. Without, with this decline, the clean energy transition would need an additional $1.6 trillion of additional investments by advanced economies in 2040. Historically, nuclear's decline has been led by the public, with their mistrust of nuclear technology being put on display since the 1970s. According to Connie DeBoer and Initsky Katzberg, researchers at the Public Opinion Quarterly, their poll asked British participants, what would you do if a nuclear power station were to be built in your area? As you can see, the majority of participants through 1976 and 1987 said that they would oppose the nuclear power station construction. Unfortunately, the nuclear power industry, in its pursuit of promoting nuclear energy for climate change, are seen by the public as promoting a dangerous technology that has caused accidents such as Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. But thankfully, the nuclear power industry demonstrates moral courage in which they risk being isolated and singled out for painful personal consequences, such as ridicule, rejection, loss of job, and loss of social standing, as defined by Ted Thomas, Director of the Department of Command and Leadership in the U.S. Army, and Ira Talat, President of Executive Coaching and Consulting Associates in Washington, D.C. The best way to illustrate Nuclear the nuclear industry's moral courage is with this artwork by Jacob Lawrence named Confrontation on the Bridge. Originally in this artwork, African American marchers were trying to were trying to get the right to vote while a dog representing the public fear, feared and snarled at them on the other side of the bridge. This can similarly depict nuclear power in which they are trying to promote nuclear energy for climate change while the public fears and snarls at them for promoting a quote unquote dangerous technology. So why does the public fear nuclear power? Well, due to nuclear power being associated with nuclear bombs, the public often thinks that nuclear power is way more dangerous than it actually is. This was displayed in a video by The Economist, an international newspaper that is considered very credible and with little bias by Advanced Media in their video on why nuclear power was so, so unpopular. Um, it's, it's like an invisible force, isn't it? What happens if there is an accident? We've got, we've got no chance. It's going to do some control it's going to cause some harm, isn't it? As you can see, this is the public opinion. Yet, nuclear energy is one of the safest forms of energy that we have, according to Hannah Ritchie, PhD in geoscience at our world in data. According, as you can see, nuclear energy has 0.03 deaths per terawatt hour of electricity produced. And to get some scale, that would mean for every one death of nuclear energy, that would mean 33.3 terawatts of electricity would be produced, which is equivalent to the annual electricity consumption of 5 million people in the EU. Along with this, Nuclear energy only generates up to six tons of CO2 equivalent per gigawatt hour of electricity produced. This puts nuclear 820 times safer than coal power and 160 times safer than coal power as well. Nuclear, unfortunately, even though nuclear power is safe, the public is still wary about it due to major power accidents, including Chernobyl and Fukushima. According to Tristan Doe, an international studies graduate at DePaul University and now editor for Earth.org, only two out of 33 inc nuclear incidents have produced a death toll, those being Fukushima and Chernobyl. Fukushima had only one direct death toll due to radiation-induced lung cancer and 573 to 2,202 deaths due to the stressful evacuation of Fukushima. With Chernobyl, it directly killed 31 people and potentially killed up to 60,000 people through premature deaths by 2065. Yet, these deaths show nuclear's growing safety it, since between Chernobyl and Fukushima, which was about 25 years, nuclear power is able to reduce its death count from potentially 60,000 deaths to 2,200 deaths, a 96% reduction. However, one of the main problems of nuclear energy, as highlighted by Mark Z. Jacobson, a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Stanford University, is that nuclear, nuclear power has insanely high builds, build, build times and costs. According to this graph compiled by the World Nuclear Association and International Atomic Energy Agency, international organizations that are responsible for promoting and representing the nuclear industry, in 2019, the average construction time of a nuclear reactor was 117 months, or about 10 years. Jacobson highlights that wind and solar only have construction times of two to five years. Along with this, Mark, Mark Jacobson also highlights the high cost of nuclear power, pulling data from George Billick and Samuel Scroggins Managing Directors at Lazard, a financial advisory and managing asset firm. 
according to their data, the nuclear power has on average $180, where's the, where's the data? $181 of the level cost of nuclear energy being is $181 per megawatt hour, while offshore wind is $106 per megawatt hour, and solar utility PV scale is $60 per megawatt hour. This puts nuclear three times as expensive as solar and 1.5 times as expensive as wind power. Yet, yet a new technology for nuclear reactors are being developed called small modular reactors or SMRs that can cut down on build times and costs. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, SMRs are the fraction of the size of new small modular reactors, are modular in design which can allow for easier construction and build times and lower build times and can generate up to 300 megawatts which is about the which is about the, a third of a traditional reactor's output. Along with this, SMRs can be deployed in areas that usual traditional reactors can't be deployed in, such as in rural areas, and have less fuel requirements, usually only need to be refilled every three to seven years. Yet, what, some of the disadvantages to SMRs are that they are still being developed, with more than 80 current reactors being developed right now, that they can only generate up to a third of the power a traditional reactor can, and that they rely on more pa passive safety systems and active safety systems. Fortunately, the public is starting to grow up, warm up to nuclear power, as shown from these graphs by Lebrecha, Rebecca LaPert and Brian Kennedy, researchers at the Public Opinion at the Pew Research Center, a nonpartisan think tank. In this graph, it shows that Republicans, U.S. adults, and Democrats all now majorly favor nuclear power, while in this graph, it shows that 41% of U.S. adults encourage the federal government to encourage nuclear power construction, while only 22% discourage federal encouragement. With these, with these improved, with climate change continuing to get worse, it is up to low carbon technologies in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. With, for, nuclear, for nuclear's growing support, it can potentially become safer, more cheaper, energy efficient, and advanced as time goes on. With these improvements and public support, nuclear power can help re renewables in the clean energy transition and potentially become a favored green technology. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Can you tell me what evidence you gathered that you didn't use, and why did you choose not to use it? Some of the evidence I gathered but I didn't decide to use was information pertaining towards nuclear power's depiction in media, nuclear power's energy, energy density, and nuclear power's um, role, role in green, green technologies. I did not use the me nuclear power's media since it was a completely different subject that would have taken a lot more time, a night, another presentation to cover. And I didn't use nuclear power's energy, energy density because it would have made the presentation too long. Okay, and one more quick question. How did you use the conclusion and questions of others to advance your own research? So I used the conclusion and questions of others to advance my own research by taking in their general ideas, taking in their perspectives, and putting weight on what, uh, how much their opinion mattered. For example, with the International Atomic Energy Agency, World Nuclear Association, and Earth.org, they all support uh, green technologies for climate change as main solutions. And so I decide, decided to use, to take into account that the World Nuclear Association and International Atomic Energy Agency would likely be a little bit more biased. But in this presentation, they, it was only pure data, so I decided to use them. And with the Earth.org, they still don't, they disprove of nuclear energy due to it being uh, non-renewable, yet they, yet it showed that they weren't biased towards nuclear energy, and so I used them as well. Okay, thank you.